In this video, we will learn about the forces exerted by charges on each other. These were first studied by a French scientist whose name was Charles Coulomb. It was known before Charles Coulomb that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. And so Coulomb took it upon himself to study the nature of these electric forces. To do that, he designed an apparatus called as a torsion balance. We have a figure of the torsion balance here. And what this apparatus has is a torsion fiber or a torsion wire. What a torsion wire means is that it is a wire, if you twist the wire through some angle theta, a restoring force comes in the wire and that restoring force is proportional to theta and so you can basically write the restoring force of the wire as k theta where k is the spring constant of the wire. And if you select a, sp a low spring constant, that means that for a very small force, you can get a very large angle of deflection. And this is the spring constant of the wire k. Now, torsion, uh, Coulomb suspended the torsion wire from one end and at the other end he attached an insulating bar. To one end of the insulating bar, he attached a metallic sphere A and this sphere is just as a balance so that the rod always remains horizontal. Then he took another metallic sphere B and attached it to a glass rod and this sphere could be inserted and removed from the apparatus. Now he put a charge cook of a known quantity Q1 on A and another charge of the known quantity and same polarity on B. By same polarity what we mean is that if Q1 is positive Q2 was also positive and if Q1 was negative Q2 would also be selected as negative. So they both had the same polarity but different magnitudes and he inserted B into the apparatus near A. Now since a and B are of like polarity, there will be repulsion between them and the ball A will move away. Now there are two forces in place here. What we have, one is the electric force, let me call it Fe, that is moving the ball A away from ball B and we have, and the moment you move the ball A away, this rod rotates causing a twist in the fiber. and the moment the fiber twists through some angle, there is a restoring force in the wire. Now this restoring force will try to pull back the ball A back to its original position. And so at equilibrium, there will be equilibrium only when the rippling electric force is balanced by the restoring force. And so we can write that at equilibrium Fe is equal to Fr and that we know is equal to the spring constant of the wire times theta. So the angle of deflection can be read out easily through the scale and so we can find out theta, we know the spring constant and you can find out what is the value of the electric force at equilibrium. So Coulomb did this experiment for a lot of charges, a lot of value of Q1 and Q2 and for a different range of separations between them and he found out that the electrostatic force is proportional to the magnitude of both the charges. It is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them and so he could write this as Fe is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R square. By doing a lot of experiments and by plotting a graph, he found out K to be equal to 8.99 into 10 raised to 9. And as we shall later see, we can also write this as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space, uh, permittivity of free space. Now, this is the magnitude of electrostatic force according to Coulomb's law. But you must remember that force is a vector. So let us write down Coulomb's law in its vector format and what that tells us is that if I have charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance r then force exerted by 1 on 2 is given by k the product of the two charges over the square of distance between them into r 1 2 cap and this is a unit vector defined as a vector going from q1 to q2 like this 
and so this is our one two hat so the force exerted by one on two is given by this and its direction is given by r12 hat and let me box that first and let us see how it matches with what we know so say what happens when my q1 q2 are both positive so when q1 q2 are positive this product is positive and so f12 will be in direction of r12 hat so it will be in the direction of r12 hat and f12 in that case will act in this direction as you can see that is a repelling force and that matches with what we know similarly when q1 and q2 are both negative again f12 will be in the direction of r12 hat and it will be a repelling force again it agrees with what we know now if one of this is positive and the other is negative either plus minus or minus plus then what happens is that this product is negative and so f12 will be in the direction of minus r12 hat because this product is negative so you'll get negative some magnitude r12 hat and so f12 will be in the opposite direction of r12 hat which means that this is an attractive force and that also matches with what we know that like charges repel and unlike charges have an attracting force between them now if you will see purely by symmetry uh, f12 the magnitude of f12 is equal to the magnitude of f21 because this is a very very symmetric equation however you can see that while calculating f12 we will use r12 which is in this direction and while calculating f21 we will use r21 which is a vector from q2 to q1 and so the directions are opposite and so what we can write is f12 is equal to minus f21 now this should really not come as a surprise to you because it purely follows from Newton's third law that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Alright, so let us recap a bit. Charles Coulomb took upon himself to find out uh, the the characters to, to characteristic to find out the electric forces that charges exert on each other. To do that, he designed an apparatus called torsion balance. And using torsion balance with various charges and various separations between them, he found out that the force was proportional to Q1, Q2, inversely proportional to the square of distance between them, and the constant of proportionality was 8.99 into 10 raised to 9, and this is what he found out experimentally. Then this we saw the how to write the vector equation for that, where R12 is the unit vector that acts from charge Q1 to charge Q2 when we are finding out the force exerted by Q1 on Q2. And we also saw that the forces obey Newton's third law in that uh, that action is equal and opposite to reaction. Alright, we hope you enjoyed this trip down the history of how Coulomb's law was derived.